AMD's next-gen desktop Ryzen CPUs are getting the biggest change since first-gen Ryzen. But before I get to that, AMD's forcing NVIDIA to make major changes to their upcoming chip to stay relevant, and RTX 50 Super GPUs along with some specs have been confirmed. Welcome everyone to Gamer Mel. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, NVIDIA is apparently being forced to make sweeping changes to their next-gen products to better compete with AMD. I've said it a hundred times, and I'll say it a hundred more. I don't care if you love NVIDIA and hate AMD, or vice versa. You should want the other to do well, because there isn't a better driving force to innovation than competition. It's why we see these companies start getting lax when they think they can't be beat. Case in point, even an innovative company like NVIDIA is being forced to up their game to ensure they stay dominant in the future. For those who don't know, AMD is set to launch their upcoming MI450 products next year. And from what we've been hearing, they're set to truly challenge NVIDIA's next gen. And according to a new post from Semi Analysis, as well as some others, NVIDIA is making some serious changes to ensure they stay on top. First, according to this, AMD's apparently upped their MI450X from 2300 watt TGP to 2500 watts. Now, you might be thinking, great, now it's just more power hungry, but keep in mind that there isn't too much that can be done at this stage of development. Though, there is one thing, but I'll get to that in just a second. But in response, NVIDIA has apparently upped their VR200 Rubin from 1800 watts to 2300 watts. Not only that, but according to this, two months ago, in order for Rubin to maintain a lead over AMD's MI450X, the VR200 Rubin memory bandwidth was increased to 20 terabytes per second per GPU from 13. That's a massive jump. It says Rubin went from being 5 terabytes per second GPU behind the MI450X in memory bandwidth to now 0.2. 4 terabytes per second per GPU ahead. And as he states, AMD running fast is making Nvidia produce better products. This right here is the key. If you love Nvidia and you really want them to make the best of the best products, or at least the best that they can, you want AMD to do well and vice versa. Ultimately, all of these companies doing really well and beating each other out is definitely the way to go. But first, a whopping 64% of you who watch my videos regularly aren't subscribed. We've got to fix that and now. I mean, it's free and you'll be the first of your friend group to learn all the latest PC hardware news if you do it, so there's zero reason not to. Next up, NVIDIA's RTX 50 Super GPUs have been confirmed. I'm talking the GPUs themselves, some of the specs we've gone over, this is big. So, the story originally comes from the major power supply manufacturer, Seasonic, where, as you can see right here, I have their PSU wattage calculator pulled up. And I'm just going to go through some of these, so we'll just, now let's go with AMD, AM5, doesn't really matter for this part. Then let's go over here, the GPU manufacturer, NVIDIA, and let's just look up Super. Ha! Ah, there they are, the 5070 Super and the 5070 Ti Super. And get this. When I actually finish it off, let's just go through these, calculate, you can see right here that I have the TDP of the GPU itself at 350 watts, which is a whopping 50 watts higher than the regular 5070 Ti. So this isn't some spelling mistake, though adding super to it would be a pretty wild mistake anyway, and in fact, the wattage shown here is the exact same wattage that was leaked for the 5070 Ti Super long before this calculator was updated, which means that this almost certainly confirms the leaks about NVIDIA's upcoming Super GPUs, and this definitely isn't the first time that this has happened. We've gotten leaks from PSU manufacturers plenty of times in the past. Obviously, they work with GPU makers, so they're able to get this information long before others, and the fact that they still haven't taken it down is definitely a good sign. Now, you might have noticed that there wasn't a 5080 Super listed, but don't worry, this is likely preliminary data and it doesn't mean that the card doesn't exist or anything like that. With that said, there is some bad news when it comes to Nvidia's upcoming refresh, as a new report that originally comes from Benchlife and was later shared by Video Cards claims that we likely won't see these GPUs until between March and May of next year. This is the second 
second time we've heard that NVIDIA won't be releasing these until next year, so if you were hoping to pick one up for Christmas, I wouldn't get too excited. And lastly for today, AMD's next-gen desktop Ryzen CPUs are reportedly getting a change so big that it will redefine the Zen architecture from here on now. You might as well call these Ryzen Next. And I'm not talking about the increase in core count or the huge clock increase that have all been leaked. These are obviously huge, but this is a change in the way Ryzen fundamentally works, and it will have a huge impact on everything, from even better power efficiency to lower latency, higher bandwidth, and the list goes on. Specifically, I'm talking about a huge change to AMD's interconnect. Most of you already know that AMD's Ryzen architecture called Zen was built on the idea of connecting multiple smaller modules into one package. This allowed for easy scalability, much cheaper chips, thanks to far higher yield rates. It was a fantastic solution to many problems that plagued the industry. But as many people learned early on, a major limiting factor was the interconnect, which as the name suggests, connects all of these modules, now called chiplets, together. When one chiplet wanted to speed to one another, there was a latency penalty. AMD has done things like adding a ton more cache, shrinking the distance between chiplets, but their interconnect, called the Infinity Fabric, has fundamentally been the same since their first generation Ryzen. That is, until now. Because according to a well-known die analyst, High Yield, who even mentioned Zen Next, AMD's next-gen Zen 6 is set to come with a new interconnect called Sea of Wires. From the beginning, AMD has used something called CERTES as the fundamental building block of their Infinity Fabric interconnect. Essentially, these take a ton of different parallel signals, turns them into a single serial signal, then converts back once it reaches the other die. Doing this whole process takes power, and it also takes time, so it adds latency. Sea of Wires, on the other hand, does exactly as it sounds. Tons of wires are added in multiple layers to connect these signals for raw, unfiltered bandwidth. This was something that simply wasn't possible before for multiple reasons. Packaging wasn't ready for it, manufacturing tolerances weren't high enough, signal integrity issues, but today, a lot of that has been solved. And what's wild is that AMD has already released a chip with this interconnect. They're Ryzen Max chips. As you can see, it has a ton of those wires instead of the CERDES found on other dies, and it explains how AMD was able to make such a monster APU. But it looks like this was almost a trial run for next gen. Basically, AMD has paved the way for future generations of CPUs, and if it really does come with Ryzen 10,000 or whatever they end up calling it, this will be one of the biggest, most fundamental changes since first gen Ryzen's release.